uh, sorted out. No one. Uh, so yes, uh, we were looking for yes, a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create unique product, service, or result. Okay. Uh, so as we uh, uh, you know discussed, uh, we talked about uh, inclusion of product management, service management, as well as uh, solution management as an project management. So when I say project management, it does include service management, product management, as well as solution management. It's a temporary endeavor. So we have to have the end result clear, crisp in our mind, or we put forth so that we can arrange our all resources alignment, work alignment, schedule alignment, cost alignment, and all the other uh, you know, aspects of managing it effectively in place with that result in mind. And that result is mostly a unique, uh, which can be a product service or a result, right? And that's how we basically manage a product. We'll understand this definition through ten knowledge area. Okay, let's take a step further and let's try to understand temporary endeavor. This is a kind of another type of revision, right? So let, let's start uh, understanding this. So we are talking about product or project objectives to be achieved. Once you have the objective clearly marked, defined, then you can plan all our energies in uh, managing those in terms of uh, getting the resources, uh, allocating the calendars, works to those resources, allocating costs to those resources, and so on and so forth. Even quality management, risk management, everything goes in alignment with the objectives we have been targeted to achieve. So a normal service management is not counted under project management. And that's how we differ basically. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. A delivery of milk is an operation, but a delivery of milk in a particular day or delivery of milk in a particular time period, when you attach a particular schedule, which is more measurable, which is more end result, clear end result in sight. That's how we normally create project. So as we discussed, if I have a pen manufacturing company, I manufacture 10,000 pens per month. So my project can be achieving 10,000 pens manufacturing with all those quality resources schedule for the month of May, 2022. This is my project. And I'll basically align all my resources, schedule, calendars, quality, risk, and everything in uh, achieving these things uh, or in planning these way proactively so that I can track them effectively from the day one to the day end. Okay, and that's how I normally create project out of operations. But operation is a bit separate from a project. There were interview questions like, tell me about difference between project and operation. So you can tell them with this example of, let's say, pen manufacturing company or milk, um, you know, delivery or car manufacturing or whatever, you know, uh, suits your in terms of manufacturing or, you know, uh, project versus services kind of thought process. You can think it through. Okay, um, the objectives will not or cannot be met. Uh, if, we, if the objectives are not uh, clear enough or if you believe they couldn't be met, then we don't start the project. So there's a clear demarcation in our mind what's need to be achieved. So we can decide if it's at all achievable or not. So from start itself, I'm very crisp clear in what to achieve and what can't be achieved. This can be due to some resources, uh, you know, unavailability. This can be something like very aggressive schedule. This can be something like even legally implicated. So there are some laws like you can't um, farm, uh, you know, uh, drugs right in North America or Canada. So that you can't have a project like I want to have, a, you know, uh, weed <laughs> produce or, you know, whatever you call it, uh, you know, um, do farming for those uh, illegal things. So I can't do that because it's already uh, barred by the legal system within my region. So I need to consider all these things. Now, all these different aspects, including uh, resources, schedule, cost, quality, legality, uh, risk management, and everything comes under this 10 knowledge area. We're going to learn them step by step. The way we normally do, we normally go with input output and process kind of scenario as we done in our business analysis things right and we'll learn it step by step so uh, here we are talking about the temporary endeavor i believe we've understood what is temporary endeavor i'll share the uh, ppt also so that you can go through that as well okay uh, i'll also share the link of pm book 
project management body of language. It's called PM book, right? Have I started recording? Okay, I've started the recording, no worry. Okay, so that you can go uh, to that book and you can read those books because our understanding of project manager management processes mostly ba based on those things. We do have our own examples. We do have our own uh, you know, discussions, but more or less, we try to uh, go through those best practices which are mentioned in PM book. And that's uh, accepted as industry-wide project management, uh, you know, uh, reference material. So that's why it's one of the best, uh, you know, um, book you can read. And if you want, you can get it. Oh, well, I'll share some audio files also, which I have converted from that PDF so that you can listen to those audio file if you don't have time to read or reading is not your forte. And this thing do happen. So believe me, you can listen to this audio as in song, uh, as in whenever you're walking, doing your exercise, having a meal or, you know, wherever you have, you know, of uh, spare time to listen to it. But I would really, really appreciate if you listen it so that you'll understand what you are, you are, we are discussing. And then you can include those in your thought processes. Again, this is a life skill rather than just a software skill or a corporate skills to be achieved. You can really improve your life if you are really an effective manager. This goes to a simplest task like making, making a tea to a complex task like, you know, doing a um, complex project for a big corporate American giant, something like that, sir, right? So we are trying to improve our life. As we seen last time, the transition, there should be a positive, positive transition whenever you try to execute a project. It can be an elevation from a current state to a future state. So there I'm trying to achieve some betterment financially and trying to achieve some betterment in terms of brand value recognition, intangible objective, tangible objectives, or I'm trying to gain some uh, something better from the current scenario. So business value creation is one of the most important aspect of a project management. If it's not there, the project, uh, the project objectives are not really clear with you and you should stop doing that project or just scrap that project right away. And why? Because we have built these thought processes and you'll understand from our knowledge uh, areas why we do that. Because unless you are getting something better in terms of either your thought process, either your learnings, either your, you know, uh, a better state of mind or a better state, a state of pocket, like you're earning a cert certain good number of dollars uh, or you're building some brand, doing a project it doesn't make any sense and that's why we will go through these filters we'll go through this knowledge area to understand how to make this project viable how to make this project to bring a value business value personal value tangible value intangible value whatever it may be unless it's bringing a value to your current scenario the project doesn't make any sense, okay? And that's what this slide basically depicts us. I've taken this picture from PM book as well. So that's how PM book explains you. There are first three chapter on introduction of project management itself, okay? So please read it to, uh, through them throughout this, uh, you know, um, whenever you have time and we'll understand how we can basically or why we normally do projects even as in business or even as an individuals, okay? Then we have something called, we talked about business values, value creation, like right? we had a good uh, look at video of project definition also. We had a good understanding of what is management or what is control. As we normally know in our day-to-day -day life, whatever you can't count, you can't control. And the best example for that is our anger or our happiness, right? For that matters, you can't count happiness. When I say I'm happy, I can be happy. I can be really happy. I'm really happy now. Something like that sort. So this way, your happiness, you, if you can't measure, you can't control. You can't manage, right? So for that, we had certain benchmark in place. When I say, I'm okay, I'm happy. I'm happy. Oh, I'm really, really happy. This means that I'm trying to assess or I'm trying to understand 
the levels of happiness or i have graded the happiness into three level five level 10 level uh, different achievement in terms of happiness i can be achieved and that way i can really define a project goal so all these management basically make sure unless you can't count you can't manage so for that we are trying to have some approximate benchmarks and then we try, uh, try to create a project goal even in case of uh, you know revenue generations we'll have a bottom line we'll have a top line and all the lines in between bottom line is this is the least profit i can achieve the top line is wow this is the best possible profit i can achieve if i'm going on top of that then there might something wrong i might do uh, doing it something illegally or i might get caught by a revenue department so those kind of tops i'm talking about right so here as a person as a manager whenever i've decided i'll earn so much dollars in my in the next month let's say may 2020 uh, 22 so whenever i decide this thing i need to benchmark that uh, you know achievement with some number so there should be a bottom uh, dollar achievement number and there should be a top dollar achievement number so when i say bottom dollar achievement number that's my you know regular salary if i'm working that's my regular income if i'm doing some consulting work that's my regular income if i'm doing some something you know um, with helping the society or something like that so so here we are talking about understanding or benchmarking certain things which we normally can't count okay so meeting business objective which are clear in our thought process is a need of a best project objectives then we have satisfying stakeholders satisfying stakeholder is one of the integral part of every project management so whatever you do you yourself is a project stakeholder the definition of stakeholder as far as pm book or as far as overall management is whoever have an interest in the you know target in the objective so whoever have an interest vested or interested or uh, invested and all those scenarios whoever have an interest in that given uh, you know objective is a stakeholder so me myself is basically a prime objective because i'm doing it i may know the result I have even calibrated the result, benchmarked the result. So that's why satisfying stakeholder expectation is one of the most prominent need of the management or to control a project. Be more predictable, as we see, right? We benchmark things. Unless and until we benchmark, we can't count how much happy or how much unhappy I am. Am I, uh, am I clear? Means, uh, could you understand what I'm trying to say here? yes okay great. so here we are trying to be more predictable more result oriented with benchmarking whatever even we can't count increase chances of success so whenever i have a clear result in mind my chances of achieving that result is really crisp and clear because i know where to go as simple as that so this way i try to achieve things with a clear goal in mind so one of the most prominent thought process of management is have a clear goal. They even most time call it smart, smart goals. We'll discuss about that uh, in a couple of slides. Smart goal is also one of the most prominent management thought process. Here, we are trying to have something like small, attainable, uh, you know, uh, clear target uh, and um, achievable goal. So unless you have smart in your goal setting, you are not clearly aligning the project towards the goal. So we, uh, you know, we need to understand the smartness in the goal. Deliver the right products at the right time. If somebody asked to deliver the product before Christmas, you should plan it accordingly. And we normally use something called management buffer. That's, a, uh, you know, around 10 to 20% of target time we normally have as in buffer. So if I'm doing a project for a month, and I want to deliver it on or before Christmas, I'll have five days management buffer. So I should be target my goal to deliver the product on, let's say, 20th of December. This way I plan with the management buffer. And that's where the, re, uh, 
the probability of success increases multifold. We'll discuss about this management buffer whenever we do um, cost estimate. Okay. Then we'll have resolve problems and issue. Whenever you have clear goal in mind, whenever you have clear schedule in mind, you know what are the problems uh, are coming to, uh, coming to you proactively. In that scenario, you know how to build mitigation strategies. Mitigation in the sense, how to solve this problem proactively before they come knocking to your door. And we'll learn these things in our risk management area. So whenever you start planning, you'll start understanding these obstacles. And that way, we will learn to do better day by day. And that's the most important thing in terms of risk mitigation. Even we'll understand how to do it qualitatively, quantitatively, and the other tools within those gamics. Okay? So all we are doing to make sure whatever we have planned and we are targeting all of our energies and efforts toward them so that we can achieve that effectively. Does that make sense to you? Do you think yes. if you, uh, yeah, if you work this way, your life will be better? Yes. As simple as, you know, finding the best route for my office. If I sit with a pen and paper, let's say on a weekend and try to find the most efficient route. Now, most finding out most efficient route can be a project. And I need to achieve it within next say one and a half hour. I'm just, you know, throwing a raw sample to you so that your thought process should kick in. Now here, I might have three alternative routes or four alternative routes to reach to my office. How do I decide which is the best? I'll sit down and try to understand what are obstacles I normally come across. How many stop signs, how many signals, how many you know uh, pedestrians walk into it? Well, in North America and Canada, we don't have uh, cows and buffalo standing on our roads, but in India, yes, that's an additional thing. <laughs> Jai Sri Krishna. So this way we keep basically uh, making our life easier or planning our life better. If you don't apply these things to your real life, you are not utilizing your full potential to achieve certain, you know, uh, efficiency within your life. This will make sure you'll have a little better time at your disposal for your quality, you know, uh, time spent either with your family or whatever you like to do for your hobby for that matters. I like to read. So I normally tend to spend at least half an hour before sleep for reading. So I have something called pocket book in my mobile and I have around 2,800 novels. So in times I might go and read Harry Potter. I like Harry Potter. I like science fiction. I like crime stories. And nowadays as I'm doing LLM on copyright, I do write to understand the copyright cases in the uh, different parts of the world. So I have downloaded all those things and mobile. So whenever I'm trying to sleep, trying to go to sleep, I normally choose any one of these and spend at least half an hour in setting up my mind so that whenever I sleep, I have those thought process which can do my life better. And this way, I have a plan or I have a goal setting for myself. Again, the to-do list is one of these management and control basic philosophy, where if I plan my day in the morning, your day is more measurable in terms of result, more in line with your thought process or in line with your even long-term plans for that matter. That's how I improve my life day by day. Okay. So again, this is a life improvement philosophy that we are talking about. Okay. The rest of the points are really uh, in line with those thought processes. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any question as of now? No. Okay. Could you be able to hear me crisp and clear? Yes, very clearly now. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, so let's let me take a step uh, further. Now again, now let's try to understand. We have understand many I say project. We have a product management, solution management, or service management included. Now let's talk about the difference in between these. Right? There are some basic differences. So we need to understand these things. So whenever you say product management, there are a bit of differences in policies and processes. So if you join a product company, 
there are some differences we need to understand in their product management okay now this will come throughout our project management but let's try to understand uh, the basic differences when you say product there's a thought process of r and d r and d in the sense research and development so first you sit back and understand whatever product i need to create or the product uh, development processes to be managed i need to understand if that product is fit to the given uh, uh, you know area i'm going to sell it right let's say you are creating a enhancement attendance management solution uh, which is generic to all organization so for such processes what i need to do i need to sit back and understand can i sell this product in the region i'm staying staying right now or do i need to shift my uh, location to some other region where these products are in demand so that whenever i start selling i'll have a good number of uh, clients to start with so that my financials are really strong in the scenario so whenever you are doing a product there's a precursor there's a proactive thought process involved in understanding the market so you need to understand the market first so there is a bit of r and d research and development involved in product management other than project management project management we normally refer to as a solution management like the example we took i go and meet a state farm vphr and try to understand if he is looking for enhancing his attendance management system from manual to automated with biometrics or iris scanner so that's a kind of a project initiation process right but in product there are some efforts go into research and development rather than business analysis activity there is a business analyst activity but which is much more smaller or it's a part of r and d umbrella research and development and umbrella for a product than a typical you know business analyst we uh, you know we have envisaged in uh, our business analysis training capsules okay so product is an artifact that is produced it is quantifiable it can be either an end item in itself or a component of item so i can have a project for manufacturing caps for my pens which i am producing i can have a project for producing a refills or acquiring the refills for my pen if i am manufacturing fountain pens let's say 10000 fountain pens per month or something like that so so here i'm trying pro to think proactively what are the things in terms of raw material i is required okay so this way i am trying to think it through how i make the product more viable more economical more profit making or i more concrete planning goes into place whenever i start uh, thinking through for product management so here what i am looking at i am looking at building a product management through and through with a strong conviction let's try to understand in terms of software how do you work on software like right? in software we have a complete business analysis cycle now i am in a chair of a project manager i am in a leadership chair where i have two or three business analysts reporting to me and how i basically Uh, make sure they do the business analysis as a process diligently so i'll overview what whatever documents they are creating whatever types of meetings they are having why are reading minutes of meeting why are reading the documents they've created and the documents what we call normally srs system requirement specification and the parts they are reading so parts like hld parts like use case diagram and so on so so that way whenever i am doing software management software solution development uh, project management i'll have a keen eye on the business analysis activities or business analysis document created by whom how and how i am going to gain the knowledge from the business analyst if you are building a building let's say if you are constructing a building i need to understand the blueprint soil 
uh, the depth of a you know basement and so on and so forth. And if you are building a building, then there are some standard processes also. It's like you are building a product, right? Creating a building, like right? building a product. So there you have some initial, uh, you know, you can say analysis or proactive working goes into place whenever you are doing certain things. Manufacturing processes, we discussed, right? And this is a standard example you can explain the most easiest. Let's say if you, uh, you have a plant or a factory to manufacture 10,000 fountain pens, right? And for that, you normally procure your refills from someone else. You, uh, you have one plastic molding machine where you create cap for your pen, one plastic molding machine where you create uh, the body of the pen and another uh, you know, plastic molding machine, a smaller plastic molding machine where you create the bottom part of the pen. So whenever the refills goes in, you normally cap it off with the bottom uh, you know, cap. So these are three different parts of pen. pen and we are procuring or we are building or we are creating it separately. And then the fourth one is procurement of the refills. Could you understand this example? Yes. Yeah, think it, think it like you are the owner of this pen manufacturing company. Let's say you're sitting in Boston and you have this factory um, out in your, uh, you know, uh, uh, courtyard or, you know, whatever uh, place you have uh, and you, you know, uh, you manufacture this pen. So whenever I'm trying to implement project management processes there, what I'll try to do, I'll try to create a project plan few days earlier, or I'll start creating a plan for manufacturing pens within the month of May. How many pens I can manufacture? And this means that manufacture, taste, uh, do quality control, quality, you know, assurance, and ship it to the uh, respective outlet as well. So all these process in one place, I'll plan it out. Now we're going to learn the nitty gritty step by step. But here we are trying to achieve how much proactive planning does help us out. Okay, so this proactive planning makes ourselves to think about if there are any major challenges in achieving those, no, well and good. If there are smaller challenges, well, we can mitigate those challenges by this way or the other. Or we might have done this in the past and we have learned from our experiences. Okay, we'll you know see how we can utilize this thought process in our project management as well. Okay, now here we are trying to understand product management as a whole, or trying to concentrate on our thought process of managing product, like building or creating pain, creating cars, building supplies, even preparing tea or coffee in the morning is a project. Every day you wake up. Every day you make tea or coffee, whatever you like to drink and drink. If you have a coffee maker, well, you need to, you know, at least procure those beans, the filters and all those things. And you need to get it started or get it programmed as per your timing. And on Saturday, Sunday, I might, uh, you know, woke up late, right? So I need to plan it accordingly as well. So this way, proactive planning does help me out to get the project executed in a better sense. And there's a bridge construction also, similar like building construction, but some additions because here I need to build some columns or what you call that, those big pillars uh, in the sea or a river because it's a bridge, right? Or whatever, you know, the height of the bridge, I need to make sure the wind shouldn't you know, shatter it and so on and so forth. So every product, if you think it proactively, it will make sure it pays in good. The business uh, value creation is much more effective in the such scenarios. And why I use word business value creation? Because we have seen it encompasses the profit, the quality, the brand building and everything else. So whenever you talk in terms of project management, we normally talk about business value creation, personal value creation, brand building and so on and so forth. So if you use these words, it means that you are a seasoned project manager and that's how we want to pursue, right? So let's say, let's understand. Some project involves modifying the product 
something that already exists. We seen in the attendance management solution. There, there was a manual process which we have automated. For example, a project team may modify an existing account receivable software or a package. So I'm trying to instill new processes, let's say digital payment in my older uh, account receivable type of, uh, you know, uh, payments uh, in our website or a UPI gateway or a credit card gateway. There are a number of things how we can improve your current uh, you know, account receivable type of software packages. Or a project team may modify, add to an existing building. So we might modify the building in terms of uh, paint, that can be a project, in terms of the approach road, in terms of the flyer, whatever, whatever is clear, objectable, result-oriented activity or a temporary, temporary endeavor we can plan is our project. I believe by this time, we have understood the basic definition of a project management and a basic definition of a product management. Is that a correct statement? Or do you have any confusion in product management here? No. Okay, let me play you a small video where we'll try to understand how we can achieve or how we can basically. Yes. So one product can be basically um, built into multiple product projects. In that scenario, we will have a product manager reporting to a, uh, sorry, a project manager reporting to a product manager as well. So product manager looking for a complete product, a project manager is looking for something like creating a battery, creating a wheels for a Land Rover, or creating a, uh, you know, a good artillery for a new tank, or something like that. Sort. So here we are talking about, or a part of product, you can say. A project manager is aligned with creating a part of a project, and product manager can be an umbrella manager, overseeing all the product manager who are basically building that product for an organization for profit making. Okay, so this is how we even have a levels of management within project management or a product management. Whenever we are talking about project manager, think it as in throughout a kind of team of project manager working on a singular activity as in one, as an unified project manager. Okay, so whenever we are experiencing or whenever we are building some experience within ourselves, consider project manager as the one entity who is managing everything, okay? It can be a project manager or a product manager. Doesn't matter that much. And whenever we come to something like product owner type of our training capsule, there we'll understand the difference in depth, how project manager and product manager differs in terms of actual tracking of any project. I kept it at the end because then you'll understand how the project is managed at an elementary level, at a ground level and how product manager can manage the umbrella activity. Does that make sense to you, sir, madam? Yes. So let's take a step further. Let's try to understand from a service perspective. Services are like, as we discussed, right? Services include items such as customer service claim service, utility service, audit service, employee assistant programs, and these are the just few examples. So these are the continuous activity, one keep doing it throughout his life. And there's hardly any changes in terms of very few improvements. Even American presidency is a service to the American citizens. And that's how we value, because American president continuously work continuously put efforts to make each of American dreams come true. Be it a new job creation, be it, uh, you know, attaining better, um, um, better economy day by day, be it controlling the strategy towards better America. And this way, we can understand the definition of a service. So service includes items such as customer service, claim service, utility service, audits, employee assistance program and so on and so forth, okay? Even 
making dinner is a service. So if you are doing it continuously, it's a kind of service you do to your family. And that's what you're nominated for. So be proud in those. So whenever you're doing any service, more or less, well, there is a profit in terms of intangible outcomes, most probably. You might not get appreciated for a dal or a roti or any specific item you made in food by anyone in the family. But still, if anyone hasn't complained, you still believe everybody is satisfied. And that's the end result we count on. Unless you, you know, um, you come, come across any complaint, I believe my customer service is uh, fit and fine. And that's how the way of positive service, uh, goal achievement, uh, you know, dream what we normally implicate. How can a project management be used in develop and implement such service? Well, we need to plan our service for a definite time period. And then that's a project. So creating a dinner today or planning for a dinner tomorrow is a project. So what I've did, I have limited the scope of a service to a particular schedule, to a particular result. And that's make it as a project. Imagine a company that wants to develop and implement centralized customer service center, right? We have CAC everywhere in big corporates, uh, in America as well as Canada region. Even in India, we have these CACs. So to build a CAC within your organization itself is a project. And once you build the CAC, to track and control CAC month by month, week by week, or year by year is a project. So when you apply a schedule and a clear objective to a service, it become, becomes a project. Defining requirements for cubicle, phones, and computers. If you are building CAC, these can be one of the projects. Selecting and purchasing and installing new call management software can be another project. Defining a new business process for taking call, escalating issues, managing call, and blah, blah, blah. These can be a project by themselves, right? Let's understand CSC in depth from a video where we'll try to understand how a service can be a project management, uh, you know, uh, party gram here whenever we try to plan a service management. Uh, it's a project management. Over that. Yes. This is also a small video. Like Hi, I'm Brad oh, Bigelow, and I'll be talking about project management and service management at the peak. Let me share this thing for you. Could you see 50? 50 PMI? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just uh, listen to this thing. It's one and a half um, or, you know, quarter to two minute, uh, minute video, and then we'll discuss in depth. Hi, I'm Brad Bigelow, and I'll be talking about project management and service management at the PMI EMEA Congress in Dublin. I've been working for almost 40 years now, and that time has been split between running IT services and managing projects to deliver them. First job in the Air Force, I ran a base telephone switchboard and got to manage the project that replaced it. This gave me a taste of the different worlds of project and service management. For getting the new system within budget and within scope, I got a nice letter of appreciation from the base commander. From the changes in complaints from customers and switchboard operators. Some projects are greenfield projects. They deliver something new where nothing existed before, like a new building in a green field. Most projects involve delivering something into running operations. These are the kinds of projects we'll be talking about in Dublin. Project management focuses on delivery that magical moment when the customer accepts the deliverables. Service management, on the other hand, focuses on what happens after delivery. Transition to service can be one of the biggest challenges for a project. Handover problems can cancel out all the good preparations that went on beforehand. Mm. Successful handover to service management is definitely a key to project success. 
With the right companies and project management and service management can form a perfect team. Join me in Dublin. Simple, uh, simple thing, right? So in service management, we are looking for something additional at the end, which you can say transitioning, where you can say mostly how to get it to the next part of service. So once I manufactured paints in the May 2022, I'll go on manufacturing paints in June 2022. So my next project, I need to uh, get prepared, get aligned the resource to and so on and so forth. So this way, services is a continuously evolving project. So even the brand value creation is more efficient or effectively needed in service management. And we'll see how, whenever we try to understand how we can basically achieve these, oh man, uh, I forgot to start it by. Okay. Uh, how we can achieve this within our project management space. Anybody have any question for me at this moment? No. Okay. I'll share the link of the video so you can have a look at them uh, afterwards as well. Okay. Now let's talk about difference between project program and portfolio management. In management, as we have seen, there are multiple layers, right? Senior manager, junior manager, uh, project manager, program manager, portfolio manager. Let's try to understand the difference within these levels. Every organization have these level one way or the other. But let's start understanding project manager first, then we'll understand the program manager and portfolio manager. As far as assistant project manager goes, it's an entry level project manager, right? So a kind of a um, couple of things, if, even if you missed in a project management, you can be called as an assistant project manager. So we'll be discussing mostly on project managers, then program manager, and then portfolio manager. These are the clear demarcation as far as PMI goes. They have three different certification for these levels as well. So PMP, the flagship exam is for the project manager. The portfolio manager or the program manager have a different level exam called PG uh, PM and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's try to understand projects. A project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or a result, right? So you are going to my, manage a product, uh, a singular project, a project. When you say program, a program of a group of related project, subsidy program, or program act activities that are managed in a coordinated manner, coordinated manner to obtain benefits not available from managing them individually. So let's say if you're manufacturing a pen, it's better to be coordinated with the pen needed to be manufactured in May. We should have so many caps ready. If they are already ready with you in a, your stock, then you don't have to create them. If you are, uh, you know, falling short, you might create or you might add some management buffer. And all these uh, basically executions, they are related because pen manufacturing is an umbrella activity. Cap manufacturing, the body manufacturing, procure procurement of a refill can be a subsidiary activity within those pen manufacturing domain. Does that make sense to you? Anybody have any question? No. So you can understand the umbrella activity and the sub, uh, subsidiary activity as well, right? Can you explain it again? Uh, sure. When you talk about, uh, think of an example, you own a pen manufacturing plant. You manufacture 10,000 pens per month. You manufacture, let's say, ballpoint pen. So when I manufacture pen, I'll have molding machine, right? I get those plastic granules and I make the pen body from those plastic granules. I mail them, uh, fill the, uh, fit it into the module and create a cap, a base, a, a body of the pen or a, you know, a small cap at the bottom of the pen and so on and so forth. So let's understand for an example, I am building this pen in three different uh, or four different ways a top cap, which you normally fit it when you close your pen, uh, if you're not using, 
a body of a pen where the refill goes in and the bottom cap, which is a small element, fit at the bottom of the pen. So I manufacture these three items and I need to manufacture it individually. So I have three lines of such plastic molding machine where I create a cap, that's a stop cap, a pen body and a pen small bottom cap. So whenever I plan my project for the month of May 2022, I have to check my stock, right? If my, you know, last month's production left me with, let's say, you know, 1000 cap, I'll have better objective of creating 9000, uh, you know, 9000 cap to be manufactured within May 2022 so that I'll make sure I utilize the a backlog as, as well. And I'll save some cost in manufacturing pen as well. But if that's a result of rework, then I might create 10,000 caps so that 1,000 will be scrapped and I'll use this 1,000 reserve in that pen and whatever, uh, you know, scrap uh, uh, or wrong items I have created as a cap can be remelted and used for reproduction as well. So this way I can plan correlated activities in a, uh, uh, what you can say, bigger pro project uh, product management type of uh, 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 scenarios. Similar things goes with the car. Similar thing goes with other manufacturing processes as well. Why I choose uh, this, uh, you know, product management? Because here you can see clearly the main activity or the main target main project uh, uh, project objective and then subsidiary project objectives which constitutes the main pain so my cap manufacturing is one project small project body manufacturing can be one small project which can be rolled out or contribute to the main pain manufacturing project does that make sense ma'am yeah got it got it so that's a program management. So multiple project management is one program management. Okay. Now let's the portfolio management. A portfolio is a collection of projects, programs, or subsidiary portfolios and operation managed as a group of active strategic objectives. Coming back to again, pen manufacturing project. Let's say I have a pen manufacturing project in Kansas, Missouri, which is really a good small place where I can have the factory in the outskirts of a city so I can get that practice, uh, you know, uh, plastic granules and all those things, whatever I need it as a raw material for building pens, right? Once I capture the Missouri market and Kansas is this kind of central to the Missouri state. Okay, so wherever, whenever I uh, acquire the Missouri market, I try to sell this pen to the Chicago market, the Illinois market as well. So for that, I plan ahead. What I do, I normally plan my month of July with 25,000 of pens so that 15,000 pens can be shipped to the Illinois delivery center where they can distribute to the pen distributor. Now for that, I need to plan ahead. Now this is again, I'm complicating the program management, which is already complicated with multiple projects. So for that, I'll migrate the project management to a portfolio management where I can have multiple pro program management. So one plan is for Missouri-based uh, pen manufacturing, other plan which can be in the you know, room besides the main plant on a kind of plant which is you know, uh, uh, settled anywhere where you know, I have, uh, the economics addressed much better way for the Illinois-based plant manufacturing. There, I'm now handling two programs parallelly. And this way I can migrate myself to a portfolio management. So portfolios are normally regional targets or regional management, mostly North American market, Canadian market, Asian market, and so on. So forth. they could be something like Midwest market or Missouri market, Chicago market, and so on. So forth. So that's how I keep building my business better and better or growing my business better and better, which is also integral part of the project management. Could you understand this? 
how we can improve our business to a level of a bigger business, multi-state business. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah. Okay, no problem. If there's any problem, do ask. Now let's understand this from a scope perspective. Projects have defined objective. Scope is progressively elaborated through a project life cycle. And this is what we call normally SDLC. So when you talk about project, have a defined objective. So I have a clear objective of manufacturing 10,000 pens. So for that, I need 10,000 caps, 10,000 body, and 10,000 small caps, and 10,000 refills to be procured from outside because I don't have the skills or you know manufacturing those are really costly. So that I'll just procure it from the uh, where are cheap refills available with the uh, you know required quality and all those things. Now this is about singular execution. Now when you go to programs, programs have better scope because here I'm trying to have separation of these projects activities or a goals right so i can tackle these projects more qualitatively more efficiently like we said uh, you know earlier i can check out my older stock and reduce and increase my production depending on, upon my older stock consumptions or the learning of each and every such project or i can share resources across so when you talk about that attendance management type of you know project example there i'm implementing this uh, you know um, electronics attendance management system in you know uh, state farms missouri office uh, state farm chicago office state farm california office and so on and so forth so that becomes a program management because somebody has to go to the chicago office somebody has to go to the uh, illinois office somebody has to go to the missouri office to install those scanners, right? Be it a fingerprint scanner or an iris scanner. And I need to plan it ahead. Even I need to procure those instruments ahead of time so that my team of um, engineers can go and fit those uh, in corresponding dose of these uh, premises. And that way I can basically deliver in a coordinated and a complementary manner. I can acquire more better resources and I'll get the discount of volumes as well. Whenever the scope increases, it's better for the organization because you can have multiple levels of profits. Plus, if you do cost cutting, if you do it effectively, the profit margin increases in multiple folds. When you go to a portfolio management, here the profits or the business value increased even in multi multi fold. The portfolio have an organizational scope that changes with the strategic objective of organization. Now, in terms of portfolio, I can start selling pens or I can start selling my resource, uh, enhancing resource attendance solutions in Europe as well, in Canada as well, in Spain as well, in the nearby country so that I can acquire more profit. And once you know the efficiency of the process, you can effectively uh, manage this project with much more efficient and cost, uh, you know, re re reduced way. So as you, we all know, bigger company makes bigger profit. It's better to join bigger corporates because they have bigger profits. They have bigger standardized process. If you join a startup, the company which is just starting up, the profits are uh, at a reduced level. You might have to do n number of things. Well, for learning is better, for pockets, it's not that good. So for such scenario, we normally try to acquire our jobs in a corporate world or in a bigger companies. Does that make sense to you? Could you understand why we normally target for IT giants or bigger companies? Yeah. This is really important because this clearly directs us to our life, how we improve our life, right? Now comes to change management. Project management managers expect to change and implement process to keep change managed and controlled. What do you mean by change? 
let's say one day I decide rather than a black pen, I create a blue pen or I create 5,000 blue, 5,000 red and 5,000 black pen because my customer is, uh, is, is got bored with a black pen, which I was manufacturing for last two, three months. So this way I can change. Managing change at a project level is much easier than a program level because in program level, we have to consider so many executions, right? Let's start on this. Programs are managed in a manner that accepts and adapts to change as necessary to optimize the delivery of benefits of a program's components as a project management and deliver outcomes or outputs. Now here, as we say, it's a multiple project at you know consideration. So here the change management is a bit complex than a project management. If you go to portfolio level, even more complex. Portfolio managers continuously monitor changes. Carried it to the other I'm not sure, but uh, I think it's very choppy, not able to hear you with the last couple of statements. Yeah, yeah, Ravindra, sir, again, there's the same thing. problem that's happened like uh, the one static. happened before. There's some static in the voice, yeah. Let me stop again and you know, let me, uh, what you can say, uh, join again, okay? So I'll just say stop recording.